What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the boxing shop. We got the whole crew here tonight. Everybody's good and healthy. What's good, nice. fellas? Chilling, bro. Good to be back. Definitely feeling a lot better than I was last week. Yeah, I feel you. I didn't think we were gonna have you on here tonight, Ray. Yeah, I was. I was down bad too, but we're back. I, you know, honestly, yesterday I was at Walmart and I was looking at. I was in the alcohol section because I know I owe you some shots. And I said last week I was going to take them shots tonight. I couldn't find a Patron, but then I was like, you know what? I doubt Ray's even going to be on tomorrow night with how he's feeling. And here you are. So now I feel like I should give you an extra shot for that, but I'm not going to. I think I'm up to like. Accountability. Yeah, I, I, there was, I, I don't think you won a bet this weekend. I just I got the Bobby Lashley one. He did beat Brock. No, no, no. You're going to take a, a DQ? That's a win. A win is a win, bro. <laughs> I don't know about that. But. I couldn't have been more wrong than um, Lee Wood. That's for sure. That one I was dead wrong on. Which I'm watching the highlights on. I didn't. I'll let you. It's actually a decent little segue. You guys want to break down the fight while I kind of watch what's going on? I mean, I, to be honest, that I wasn't necessarily surprised by the outcome just because of Lara's power. Um, and honestly, Lee Wood is a relatively hittable guy. So I figured there was always the possibility that Lara could kind of catch him and change the the trajectory of the fight. And that's ultimately what happened. And Ben Ben Davidson made a judgment call. It's tough to argue with him. He knows his fighter. Um, but it was a it was a tough stoppage to be Lee Wood. Like I could see why he was upset about it. Damn. Yeah, I was yeah. I was hoping he could pull it off. It was a it was a good fight, man. It was one of my favorite style type fights. You had, you know, a lot of was just loading up with everything. Uh, Lee Wood, he's a good fighter, man. Um, but I, I thought the I thought the stoppage was correct. Like Wood was out of it. Like that, that ref had already given him an extra 10, 15 seconds, you know, the hometown cooking, like. Let, let's uh, keep him in this fight. And, you know, Davidson threw in the towel kind of last second. Wood didn't even have his hands up. He was going to eat something big, you know. Of course, in a world title fight, you know, who knows if Wood gets back there again. And he, he probably wanted to go out on his shield. But I, I don't think you can really argue uh, with, with, with that stoppage, you know. I've, wa I've watched it a few times. In the moment when I was watching it, I think I was upset because Woods shown that resilience. Like he showed it in the Conlon fight. He got dropped. He gets up. He comes back. So, and there was, I don't know, maybe 15 seconds left in the round. So that's where I sympathized with him. But I think ultimately, right, 15 seconds is enough time to take really oh, damaging yeah. punishment. You know, if you're not, if your legs aren't under you and you know what I'm saying, you don't have your faculty. Well, and I'm watching it and I think Davidson has all. All that, like, because it's all right in front of him, right? Like, he's he's already on there. He can see how close Lada is. And he's he's watching the ref. He's watching Lada. The ref didn't push him, like, back all the way. He was yeah. ready to pounce on him. Woods kind of – or, yeah, well, he's looking at Woods right there. He can see, you know, his, he's not really all there. His hands are down. So, I, I really think – I think it was a great decision by a trainer because he, if you look at it, he's looking at all of that. And he's really the only guy – that close with that, you know, ability to see all that was going on, um, you know, and of course you hate to lose like that, especially someone like Wood who, who would probably say, hey, well, let me just get knocked out because he has came back. Um, but, you know, as, as a trainer, I think he made a, I think he made a good decision. Yeah, bro. And if if I correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't remember even when he got dropped by Conlon, I don't remember his legs ever looking like that. And Conlon yeah, is like not that. nearly. Well, Conlon's not nearly. I think it's Conlon, it, was, it was like at the very end of the round. So yeah. Maybe we, we, you know, we didn't see. But, you know, we say only 15 seconds left. But like I said, a lot of was there ready to throw something. And, and you know, and Wood didn't even have his hands up you know maybe if woods covering up to begin maybe davidson holds on a little bit but i think he took that all into account and i, I can't blame him man and hopefully you know when wood goes back and watches it that he could kind of see that 
trainer had his best interests in mind, you know. We see. I saw uh, he put out a tweet that he, that he he understood that. Oh, okay, that's good. You know, because we we've seen it go the other way with, with Deontay, right? And uh, Deontay kind of cut ties with with uh, I forget his name, man, his old trainer, um, Mark Breland. Mark, Mark Breland, yeah, and, you know, Breland was kind of Breland was right there too to make that decision. But you could see how it could go. You know, a fighter just cut off a trainer because of that. So I mean, it, it's good to see that. I guess Wood understood. Yeah, it's you know, and it, I think. There's a real argument that Mauricio Lara is the best puncher at featherweight right now. I mean, just as far as kind of vicious one punch ability, I feel like he's got to be the number one guy in that department. And just on merit, beating the two, you know, having the two Warrington fights and then coming in against Lee Wood with all his momentum, stopping him, there's an argument that Mauricio Lara is the top featherweight in the world right now. Yeah, and I mean, on accomplishment, I think Will Basie's the best fighter, but yeah. I think Lara on merit is is maybe the number one guy. Well, and I think also like what makes Lada, you know, if we are putting him at, at that top guy, is you know th- those are things that you don't know how others are going to react to that, how, how others are going to ra- react to the power, the the pressure, the you know he really throws everything with bad intentions, um, and you know and yeah. Uh, until someone's in the ring beating him, you know, I, I'm going to have to give him a shot against anybody. Take a, so, well, the other fight I wanted to talk about was the uh, um, Neri and Havanesian, but I'll let you guys keep going. There was some there was some interesting prospects on this card that I just want to bring up real quick. We don't have to go through the whole card, but I think that but, Gary... Well, sorry, to go to, go ahead. Just to, to say on this fight, I see Jesus asked the question. He says, you think uh, Wood reaction time would have slowed after the knockdown? I don't think he had any reaction at that moment. No. The next 15 seconds or whatever, I don't think it was about reaction time. I don't think he knew where he was. Like I said, I, I really look at it. He didn't even have his hands up, right? Like, he wasn't he wasn't about to duck a punch or slip a punch that was about to come. Um, it, I think it was just going to be how much – Damage was a lot of going to be able to land in that 15 seconds. So that's why I, I'm fine with it. I see Nib saying the champ has to go out on the shield. To me, he did go out on the shield, man. Like, I, you don't want to see the guy die. And, uh, you know, I, he had nothing to offer at that point. And that's why I'm fine with the stoppage. But, yeah, yeah I, I do understand you don't want to lose a belt like that, I, I, I suppose. And I think there's some truth to the fact that in a different era of boxing, the fight likely would have continued. But I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing. I think that that Ben Davidson made a judgment call around a fighter that he's been working with for a bit and that he knows pretty well and that he's actually gotten through right other fights where Wood's been dropped and made the judgment call to let him continue. So, you know. And, yeah, and also, like, I, I'm I'm saying if that fight's not – in his backyard, I think that fight's called off, right? Like, 10 seconds, he, he was not ready to go, right? Like, like I said, I, I think they gave him – and, and it, of course, it's not 10 seconds. It's the 10 count, which I'm fine with. But when that fight should have been, hey, let's go, that, that ref kind of dragged that out, which, which, hey, it's hometown, backyard, I'm fine with it. Um, but even after then, he still showed to me that he, he just wasn't ready. What is what does Mauricio Lara do next? I've been kind of putting thinking about how this should play out. My initial reaction is that I would like to see Lara fight the winner of Robisi Ramirez and Isaac Dogbe. Um, but there's obviously a bunch of great opponents. Is there anybody else that kind of stands out for you guys? Is it is it feel kind of early for Robisi, or do you think the time is just right for him now against Lara? This is just my take. I think if he gets the win over Nova and then gets a win over Isaac Dogbe and his Olympic pedigree, I do think that he's ready for that kind of fight. Absolutely. I like also, this is a great point, Luis Alberto Lopez versus Mauricio Lara is, that could be a fucking classic. For for me, I, I think there's money to be made over there, staying overseas. You know, they mentioned the rematch clause. 
Uh, no more than that. Warrington getting into it with Warrington. You know, I saw uh, Lada even confirm that he did spit on him. It's like those guys really seem to hate each other. Warrington is such a dirty fighter. I'm not even mad that he got spat on. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I, I think I think there's some good money to be made over there. Um, and, and fights that, you know, I wouldn't mind watch, watching either. And easier probably than Robisi, so... That's that's me picking like the fans fight. Like if we're trying to determine who the best guy in the division is, I think yeah, yeah. if Robesi gets past Dog Bay, it's pretty obvious to me that him and Lara are kind of the top two guys in the division. Yeah, no, I'm with that. I, I just think uh, there's probably easier checks to be made. There, there's there's definitely there's the rematch, you know, with Lee Wood, which I think that'll probably happen. Um, I, I think the winner of Figueroa and Mark Maxile, you know, I think Marie, there's a lot, there's a decent little batch of featherweights right now. And I think that Mauricio Lara is very much in the mix against any of them. Yeah, for sure. I haven't watched the fight yet, but from what I've been hearing and seeing, um, that was a spectacular knockout too. So it was a, a lot of momentum on Laura's side. Oh, it, was a, it, was, it, was a, it was a perfect punch, man. Like, you don't hook with the hooker. They were both getting their hooks off. And one just landed better, and um, yeah, perfect punch. I think Lara and, and and Michael Conlon is a good fight too because Conlon has that great boxing ability, and it's going to be you know essentially him trying to walk that tightrope, you know, against the the puncher in Lara. There's yeah. just there's a lot of solid matchups in this weight class right now, bro. You can beat the guy who beat your guy that beat you. You know what I mean? So he'll have that moral type of victory. The, I think the most appealing one off rip though is him and Luis Alberto Lopez. Yeah, I think that'll be the, at least the best action fight. Lopez kind of deserves a big fight. It seems like they're at a similar position in their career right now. So this yeah, undercard. Yeah, you can go ahead and talk about the undercard. I, I kind of cut you off uh, to answer that question, but if you have anything to speak Not, on, I, I didn't catch the undercard. There's, uh, there's, there's two guys in particular that I think are worth highlighting. There's a six foot three lightweight named Gary Cully. Uh, he's 16 and 0, 10 knockouts. I mean, he's got, he, he knocked, he stopped his opponent, also an undefeated opponent in the second round, just leveled him. The, the, the frame on this guy and his mobility, his ability to move and his boxing ability. As far as lightweights go, I think this is a very, very dangerous guy that a lot of people are not going to be trying to get in the ring with. You know, when you can when you can be that tall and that rangy for a weight like that, and you have punching power, and you know how to keep guys at the end of your shots. I mean, he has this. He has a similar frame to fucking Zordo Ramirez, and he's a lightweight. You know what I mean? So, is that he, how far down the card was it? Because right now I'm on. I just finished the Doofus fight. I'm on the Smith Ellington fight. It was. It, I, I'm not entirely sure where in the card the uh, that was the other one I was going to talk about is Dalton Smith. It yeah. was not his best performance, but he's another one that has some really solid boxing ability. Kind of reminds me of like a more explosive Carl Frampton. Um, I think definitely has like the skill set to at some point be a, a future world champion. Um, and he's at 130 pounds right now. There's, just, there's a level of precision to his work. He's very accurate. He's very difficult to hit. Um, I think those two guys, are, for me at least, were kind of the highlights of the undercard. And I think that Gary Culley, you know, when you look at the batch of lightweights and, and the size of all of these guys, I just think that he's a handful for any of them. Yeah, we're looking at this dude Smith, uh, he's very rugged in there too, which I like seeing. Like he's got that. Uh, he's not afraid to get rough on the inside and whatnot. He wasn't really busy enough in this fight. The guy was so outmatched, but he has kind of like I was trying to think of a good comparison, but he has kind of like a Stephen Shaw sensibility about his offense, where it's like kind of minimalist, but he's just a really smart boxer. I see. Um, and he does have that ability to come forward. I think he, it's good that he at least has that gear that he can switch to and just kind of get on the front foot. Um, so, yeah, I think to anybody that caught that undercard, I think those are the two guys, at least for me, that stood out as guys that will be fighting on the world level at some point in the next couple of years. 
it's a decent little card. It's uh, with you know, even though they just had another rate increase uh, to zone, it's I'm I'm intrigued on wanting to subscribe, but that price that price creep rate, man. I don't know if they if they well, can that, that price increase is crazy. Like you you can't just increase it like that without. Like, what are you offering with it? It's like, oh, we're going to increase this, but then now we've shown you that we do pay-per-views. Um, yeah, I don't I don't understand what's... Also, how is that attracting new people yeah. to watching it? Like, the model should be to grow to the fan base, not to try to increase the price on the people that are already subscribing. Yeah. I would be more inclined to subscribe if the pay-per-views were included. Because having to pay monthly... And then pay for pay per view. Yeah. I'm not with that. I mean, that, that's and that was their whole um, rollout from from the beginning. Like pay per views gone. And then well, now, and we'll if they wanted to even push it and do pay per view to non subscribers, but if you're somebody who's committed to the product, like how can, how are you going to do that? Yeah, I, I just don't get saying, hey, this is our new price, and we still have pay per view. Like you got to offer something with that. Like this is our new price, but now we're offering, I don't know whether it's you know, full behind the scene. Or, I mean, offer something. If you're gonna increase like that, I mean, it, it started. I want to say like ninety nine dollars for the year with no pay per views, and then now I think this latest price increase is going to what two forty nine twenty five two fifty something like that. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and the thing that gets me too is. Um, there's not, it's not like there's a bunch of fighters that are signed to that platform that we're going to see exclusive stuff. And like you said, what else well, are you getting for that price point other than, you know, the live fights? Um, I it, think they have a, a good library, if I'm not mistaken, right? I mean, they have, yeah. yeah. All right. But I, I just don't, I mean, I, I don't think they have the, uh, like the original commentating, you know, which really I throws that, me out. Bro, I yeah. hate that. Like, if it's not the HBO guys that I saw when I watched that fight, I don't really want to hear it. So it, it kind of pushes me away from even kind of re-watching some of these fights. But, um, you know, even that, that price point, even if you had some guys that I could say are worth that price point, okay. But, like, I, I get you're paying Anthony Joshua a lot of money, but that's not someone that I really care to see. Like, I don't think he's that guy. Right. Uh, so then you have Canelo, and, and that's pay per view. Like I, I get it, uh, he, he's the biggest name, but you know if you're raising it that much. Have some. None of these guys are that active. They, none of these guys fight more than twice a year. That's true too. Yep. And well, you know what, what's interesting too about pay per view is the reason why the prices went up is because cable prices also went up. Um, so you know the cost of live events was more. But when you have a streaming platform and you're just cutting that cable middleman out, how are you still charging $100 for a pay-per-view? Your price at that point should just be the $50. They should at least bring back the $50 pay-per-view. They're charging it because they've lost money over the last couple of years. But the yeah. issue is that the way to make that back is to grow the sport, grow the yeah. fan base, get more people to subscribe, not to continue trying to fucking juice the people that have kept the company flow like you know what i'm saying like right. i've been on the zone since fucking the beginning you know what i'm saying why am i being punished for that yeah you should at least have been grandfathered into your old school pricing or something and i kept it for a long time and then sometime last year they they switched it up on me and it went from 10 to 20 and it was just like you know i don't feel like it's a better product than it was in 2018 i feel like maybe if anything it's a worse product i mean do you get more entertainment out of the zone or netflix monthly you're, you're not you're not picking up their uh, their darts showings. I'm not watching a lot of darts. I'm not watching a lot of you know uh, middle school ping pong championships or whatever else they got. <laughs> no man, I, yeah. I, like I said, I, I, I was a uh, you know from the beginning too. And then I think I let it just lapse. But when I saw this two fifty or whatever, you know, I logged into my account and said, "When is this supposed to renew?" Because I'm I'm not doing that again. No. <laughs> Though they are making it kind of hard because this past weekend with that, that wood lot of fight and then in the nightcap when we got Nary and Art, man, that was, that, to me, that's the fight of the year so far. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm excited to watch that that fight. I heard everybody talking about that in the chat and then I've seen man. it on the internet, man. 
that shit was humbling, bro. That was really one of those humbling fights, man. Neri really the 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 not the punishment Hovanesian took in the first five rounds was fucking nuts. And then, you know, he was able to hang in and really rally back and win some rounds and put kind of a beating on Neri for a couple of rounds in there. And then obviously the the conclusion of the fight with Neri Stop and Hovanesian. It was just a really one I unless there's another really, really special fight, that's fight of the year so far. Yeah, I it, just it had it all, you know. By the way, that was fucking amazing, Jesus. To all me, right. it had it had the back and forth. It had like both guys able to kind of hurt each other. Um, and then you know, Nary when he when he kind of like he got off his moving and was just like, "All right, I'm here. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna exchange with you every time you exchange." Um, yeah, man, that that was that was an awesome fight. He's a he's a real wild man. Like he's a yeah. real wild man. He's for real. Yeah, he's calling them on. Uh, you know, standing up in between rounds, whether that's just a head game or something. Like, man, he he was there for it and he delivered. My only complaint, of course, my complaint all the time, Sergio Mora, man. I, yeah. bro, <laughs> I I I just don't. I just don't. He gets into this uh, where he just wants to get his point across so bad, and he he'll be watching a fight. And he wants something ba so bad to happen that he keeps telling you it's happening. And then, like, the opposite happens. And it, it's just, uh, to me, that was kind of the only downfall. I just really wish they had announcers. Huh? What, what are you referencing? What point was he trying to make? The, the, he just kept saying, like, oh, something big is going to happen for art. Something big is going to happen. Oh, that body, the body work's going to pay off. It's paying off. It's going to work. And, yeah. The body, I, I can see the body work. Maybe it did cause Nary to be right there. But bro, Nary was never not throwing big bombs, right? Like it was always, to me, he was always still, if he lands one of those clean, it's, it's going to be bad. And, uh, you know, Sergio Mora kind of like acted like this was going downhill for him. Uh, and, and it just, it just, I mean, it, I felt like it was a little bit because he was so dominant early in the fight. And the fact that Hovanasian stuck around and was landing some really big shots, the, the, the momentum of the fight definitely did change in the sixth round. Yeah, I, I'll give you that. Like, Neri stopped moving around. But I, I'm just saying, where a guy is still throwing hard and still, you know, still going for that, it just wasn't to the extent. I guess that yeah. as Sergio was was saying, right? Like, and and I get what he's doing. Like, I, I'm sure he sees he's trying to you know watch something and and say what's gonna happen. And he, the the narrative each round is like leading up to that. But he he just goes so he was just going so hard like that. That what is what was happening? And uh, man, it just it's kind of like a distraction for me. Like, bro, just just enjoy the fight, right? Like. Maybe your narrative's wrong. Like, can't we just enjoy this fight? Both guys back and forth. Uh, to me, it was just kind of like, yo, the body shot. Oh, that right hand of the body. The, he's stabbing him now. He's stabbing him. It's like, he is. But, like, let's look at the other side, too. Neri is still throwing bombs. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's my only complaint. But, man, hell of a fight. Like, like I said, best fight I've seen this year. I, I, I would like to see them run this one back at some point. I don't know if that's what they do next. I think Nary's the mandatory for one of the for the belt that Fulton has, um, which I think oh, he I deserves. Mean, yeah, but I mean, even uh, I, I know he was calling out in a way like, "Bro, you don't want you don't want those problems." Like, <laughs> I, I don't think even he does though. Think he I mean, he might, <laughs> he might, like you said, he's he's a wild guy. He might, but I, I kind of uh, in a way, it's kind of become like. What what did you say? Myth, mythical at this point to me, like, bro, I don't see nobody beating this guy, and I'm kind of even overlooking Fulton, which Fulton's like a huge test. Sure. Um, and, and I, I kind of have to catch myself, like, hold on, he's going up and way to fight Stephen Fulton. I don't know if he's that power is going to carry over, but so I, I got to catch myself at, at times, you know, to be realistic. But you know. When, when I just think, in a way, Neri, I'm like, bro, Neri, that's not good for you. 
No, in a way, is going to be the favorite against anybody he fights. I think that Neri is one of those guys that he's just a, a, a real fucking entertainer, and he actually has some real boxing ability and, and really explosive power. So I, to me, it feels like outside of Inouye, who I think would beat him, I think he's in a 50-50 fight with anybody at 122 right now, just off of the, the, the number of things he can do, how dynamic he is. And, you know, I don't know, I don't know if he beats all of them, but I like his chances against MJ Akhmadaliev. I like his chances against Raiz Alim. I think Alim would be the favorite and has kind of a more consistent skill set. But he's an intriguing opponent for any of these guys for sure. And if you're not elite, he's going to beat you. And whether you're elite or not, he does want to fight you. And, and that's what I like about him, right? Like, he, he's going to fight whoever – and, you know, right, this is just a hard yeah. fucking fight. A lot of guys are not going to be trying to fight this Hovanesian guy because it's just going to be a fucking bitch of a fight. And and, and, and when you say wild man, like he seemed to enjoy it, right? Like in between rounds when he was standing up, he's dancing and he, he goes right right to the center of the ring. He's got a, you know, got a that, cycle. Yeah, and whether that was because, you know, his legs were taken away because the body punches, I don't necessarily know that's true. I, he might have just felt comfortable exchanging with this guy, right? Like, I don't know. Um, this but. is this was this was my take, right? I felt like in the sixth round, he got that little machismo thing. He started like talking and shit, yeah. and then he did take some body punishment, and it kind of put him in his place and forced him into a fight. And yeah. I think that Hovindesian was kind of winning over the momentum, but at no point did I feel like. Neri wasn't in the fight or wasn't, you know, perfectly capable of doing right. what he did. Yeah. And I think that's what made it such a good fight. I'm on, I'm on board with that too. Like I said, my, my complaint was that like Sergio was like, this is going to happen. This is going to, and, he, and, yeah. and it's not necessarily so much this fight. It's like, he does that in fights. Like he gets in his mind, what's going to happen. And he just goes all out trying to sell it. And I'm like, man, sometimes, I, yeah, I appreciate you giving that insight of what's happening. Pauli Malinaji did that probably the best to me. Uh, Manuel Stewart also, but also like, I mean, say what, give the insight, but let's just enjoy this fight too, you know. And, and I think sometimes Sergio takes away from just enjoying enjoying the fight and enjoying the unexpected by trying to tell us what's gonna happen. True. I've I've no. I mean, I'm not a big fan of Sergio Moro's commentary anyway, because you know, he's on top of sticking to a story that he feels. He usually is pretty biased with towards one specific fighter every time, and makes it kind of. Oh, he doesn't. Oh. He doesn't hide it either, like at all. Um, hey, but but in the in the wood, <laughs> we go back to wood. A uh, lot of, I did respect the. I don't even know who the announcer was. Was like, he said. I am going for Lee Wood. I'm a fan of Lee Wood. And I was like, bro, was I, hey. It was Carl Frosch. It was Frosch doing the scoring, right? And I was like, bro, thank you for saying that, right? Like, if you say that while commentating, I respect that more than just trying to, like, disguise it and slide it in there. He, he straight up said, I'm a fan of him. I want him to win. And I was like, bro, okay, I get that, man. Cool. I, I do that, too. Like, I'll score fights, and I'm like, man, but I'm going, I'm going for him, so – if I have a reason to give him, I'm going to do it. And, you know, that's kind of the first time I think I've ever heard someone on that kind of platform actually acknowledge that. Um, and I wasn't mad at it. I, aside from, from Sergio's commentary, they had a different guy with him that wasn't Grisham. And I thought that that guy did a really good job. Actually, I thought the commentary on this card as a whole was better than we normally get with the zone. Yeah, mostly, mostly because of this other guy that was lead. I've been trying to find his name, and unfortunately, I can't find it. I'll make sure I do next time so I can shout him out because I really liked what he was doing. I felt like he knew what he was talking about, um, and I felt like he had a general just like respect for the sport that you don't always get with the uh, Grisham Mannix crew. Oh yeah. The the Kriegels and all that other nonsense. So what do we I got? Like what do we got this weekend, fellas? 
Well, I know we, the, you know, I know the one you guys want to talk about, but before can, we, get, can we can we just rewind a little bit? Please. Go ahead. Let's go to Friday, and you know, maybe this might be out of everybody's wheelhouse, even the viewers. But the bare knuckle. Oh yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Bro, they put on a car. It was their Knuckle Mania 3. And, you know, for those, maybe it's not the most technical aspect of boxing, but, you know, for those that like violence and that, I thought they put on a great card, bro. We, we saw Boxer. He beat Hasim Rahman Jr., uh, Greg Hardy, get knocked out. Huge upset. Um, you know, when you, you got guys close to 300 pounds throwing with no gloves, you know, anything could happen. Greg Hardy got knocked out. And he was out um, cold. Yeah. Uh, what? For WBA champion Austin Trout? Yep. Um, did a hell of a job, bro. That 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 fight, I saw it. Uh, it's also on YouTube. Uh, him and Diego Sanchez, former UFC guy. That fight looked like, you know, you see a guy at a bar who's tough and you see a guy at a bar who knows – more than the tough guy, and you know Austin Trout put it on him, right? Like had a, had a it ended up stopping because Austin Trout, after dropping him, kind of busting him up and pointed at him like, "Bro, you got to do something. Like you got to look at this guy." Uh, Austin Trout won by stoppage, and then um, man, probably one of the most craziest things I've seen. She lost, but uh, Teresa Sigala, um, she lost, but that's what I'm talking about because she got knocked down, ankle completely out of place and she put that thing in place herself um mm. you know you see a lot of guys quitting for various reasons right um and, and she put her ankle completely dislocated ankle put it back in place and tried to stand up which she couldn't do but yeah that was that was nasty bro that was yeah yeah i i never i've never seen that before but uh man just shout out to bare knuckle as a whole um you know, it's not for everybody, but, you know, like I said, it, it, it's violence. It is has an aspect of boxing to it, just kind of straight hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, and, yeah, man, they, they, had a, they had a great card. When are they doing another one of those, do you know? Uh, yeah, they, ha they have another one coming up. I want to say, man, I don't know if it's already next week, but um, they're, they're pretty uh, – they're pretty active, and, and they have, they have a, a you know, just an app. I want to say it's like, I want to say it's less than five dollars a month, and, and um, man, it gives you access to all their events. So, oh yeah, I just hopped on their website real quick. There's actually one on when is that? Uh, next Friday, the twenty four. Or actually, that's this Friday, the twenty fourth in New Orleans during Mardi Gras weekend too. That's crazy. Oh, also the they had. I think it was their light heavyweight champ, Lorenzo Hunt, getting completely bodied, knocked down, you know, when their arm goes behind them, like they can't even hold themselves up. Uh, he, he was the champ. He's knocked down. He gets up, guy getting ready to finish him off, and he lands a one punch, you know, one punch, hit him, quit him, and uh, retained his championship. So That's for cool. hyping it up as knuckle mania, it lived up to it, and uh, man, I just had to throw that out there. Yeah, it looked like a dope event from all the clips and everything that I saw too, man. I'm, I'm, I'm more intrigued to watch one of those shows than like a UFC show for sure. Um, yeah, for sure, man. And Austin Trout, bro, Austin Trout came out rocking a baldy. Uh, you know, he, 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 there, there have been a boxers who have tried it. You know, I, Paulie has done it, but Austin kind of seen. To really grasp it, right? Like he was, you know, holding with my one hand and landing. My guy Harry Bigliotti did like a, a variation of it in the trailer triad, fighting with the the much smaller gloves. So, you know, I think they're you know four or six ounce gloves. Yeah, yes. and man, so like like I've seen these guys in Austin probably adapted the best that I've seen, right? So, uh, you know. I, I like that they throw it on Fridays. It doesn't really compete with boxing. It doesn't really compete with UFC. It's, it's kind of its own thing. And, you know, they get some of these guys. It, it really doesn't matter who they get, right? Like, you, these guys are former UFC, 
MMA, former boxers or whatever, but it's really a sport in its own. Uh, and it's entertaining to watch. I'll say that. By the way, I just want to shout out Corey Erdman. That was the announcer on the zone that I was talking about. Um, I know you already got an answer for this in the chat. Jesus M. Andy Ventus, I think, according to an Instagram post of his, got a no contest in his fight. So if you want to get more information about that, go to uh, Andy's Instagram page. I think there's some level of explanation. I, I, used, to, I used to hate that, though, right, when uh, boxers will promote their fight or pages will promote a boxer's fight. Oh, I'm fighting this week, I'm fighting this weekend, and then uh, you just never hear anything. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm guessing you didn't get the win, right? Because I'm not even on box rec, by the way. But but Andy did post about it. It there, it was unfortunately no contest. Oh, okay. So this this weekend, you ready, Ray? <laughs> it is. Hold on, man. I got a little. I got a little time. So we take one more time out. Yeah, yeah. Also, this weekend, returning. Um, feel it. It's on your way. You feeling it? Oh man, what? That is sick, bro. We got the the Caleb Plant, David Benavidez, his little uh, month. Give a little shout out to Mortal Kombat. That fight shirt uh, will be coming to you. Just wanted to throw that out there. There you go. Exclusive for y'all right now for you guys just tuning in. Got tanks, too. Got the tank top. Look at that. That's beautiful. Yeah. Look at that design, though. We got all the 168 pounders down here from Canelo to uh, what, Mungia, and then Choose Your Fighter. Hey, great design by your own Felix. Hey, all at me. I do freelance work. No, I'm kidding. I don't do work for anybody anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Just Dakota. <laughs> um, yo, there you go. Y'all saw the exclusive preview of the uh, Caleb Plant, David Benavides fight t shirt. Retro design. Uh, of course, we created that collection. There's going to be a whole lot more coming out if y'all like that. But make sure y'all uh, y'all hop on those pre-orders coming pretty soon. But this weekend, let's talk about it. Dakota, your favorite fighter, <laughs> your favorite prospect Yeah, to talk he, about. I, he might be a contender now. Oh, yeah. He's a, well, yeah, actually, he's going to go from prospect to contender after this weekend. How does that make you feel, Dakota? I'm I'm just so disinterested. And, like, it, 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 my problem is I yeah. just really, really don't give a shit. <laughs> That's really my issue. I'm not even I'm not even on team, like, hater. It shouldn't exist. Da, da, da. I'm just like, why does anybody give a fuck about this kid? I don't really get it. Like well, and now he's getting a world ranking and he hasn't he's fought one professional boxer who's a fifty year old man, and because he's worth a lot of money, he's gonna get some kind of ranking. I don't know. That's how it goes, bro. That is how it goes. The business that doesn't mean I have to give a fuck though. <laughs> uh, so, so, so at what point though do do you start as a boxing guy? At what point do you just start saying, okay, hey, we we got someone. I think, honestly, if he beats this kid, I will feel differently about him because it is a guy that's a professional fighter that comes from a fighting family. Um, I think that would say a lot. I just think that the, 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 the ability to jump the line on a world ranking, you know, and potentially being up for that, having not fought another professional fighter, I get the argument that, oh, look at what these other prospects do in their early fights. But none of those guys, other than Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., really get a world ranking until they beat someone of merit. So I think that's my issue with it. I'm not saying he can't fight at all. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying the money he brings to the table is the only reason that he's going to get some kind of ranking and not what he's done in the ring. Because no one else gets to beat basketball players and wrestlers with hip replacements and get a world ranking. No, hey, and, and I'm, I'm fine – with that, I think you're 100% accurate in that. But, I mean, seeing how, you know, he's there because of his name and not necessarily because of his skills, That I mean, that should kind of paint the blueprint for what, what these other guys want to do, no? I, I'm, I worry about what that means for the sport, though, because at what point does a world ranking not actually have anything to do with what you've accomplished in the ring? And I think that that's, well, that's a slippery slope. 
It, it is. But I, I don't think we should be mad at the boxer for that, right? Like, I'm not mad at Jake Paul for that. I should be mad at the WBC for that, right? Like, you're granting this. For sure. You're granting this. You're grant, Yeah, you're granting this guy a world ranking because yeah. of what he could bring you, which is money, right? 100%. You want your 3%, 5%. I don't even know what sanctioning bodies take these days. But I think we would all agree, like, you know, Jake Paul, let him have 15, 20 fights first before and you that, rank them. And that percentage thing is, is, is the reason that he's ranked because they know the value of a title fight involved with Jake Paul is going to be insane. Yeah, and, and whether, whether it's even money or whether it's just a look, you know – Solomon, Suleiman, whatever, can't wait to hop in the ring and put one of his worthless what is, uh, medals around Jake Paul, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 does it, so two things. For one, would he be getting ranked if he was like a welterweight? Because I think that just speaks to the lack of the, the talent pool in a cruiserweight division. You know what I mean? If he was heavyweight, if point. he was – a lightweight, you know what I mean? Um, I don't think that would be happening. And right. What weight class is is devoid enough of talent to excuse that? And yeah. it's really just cruiserweight. Exactly. And and what you know, Ray said exactly what I was gonna say. It's it's I mean, it's no fault to Jake. He's just doing I'm pretty sure that was news to him too. It's not like he cut a deal with WBC, like, hey, let me get this title off you. Although it wouldn't surprise me with WBC. <laughs> <laughs> let me see some crazy things like I, I i get that man like him being oh now he's world ranked or even if tommy fury wins it's like now tommy fury's world rank it's obviously like a money grab and them just wanting to be in the jake paul business and he's and tommy fury is capitalizing on that last name right that oh, jake, yeah. paul's, jake paul's not the only person capitalizing on a moment here no it's so like both guys are gonna gonna make money and i mean Money is why fights happen. If you hear, oh, we're prize fighters. Like, I get that. But you would think the WBC or any sanctioning body would kind of hold to a higher standard and be like, all right, like, do your thing. But, you know, you're not world, you know, world champion level yet. And by the way, you know, you said at what point will I be interested in it? Like my interest is generally in like the highest level of boxing. And when I watch him, I don't see an elite level boxer. I'm not saying he can't fight at all. I'm just saying I don't see a world champion. I don't see, you know, a guy. I, I see a guy that I know plenty of guys in plenty of gyms that nobody knows their name that would do him dirty. You know what I'm saying? I don't see a guy that would survive certain kinds of gyms that I've been in. So, and I, and again, that's not to say he can't fight at all. I'm just saying because of his value, he's treated like the fucking crown jewel everywhere he goes. And I just don't think it, he deserves it. I, I, yeah, I get that. I get that argument. And, and for me, it's just, man, he, he is what he is. And I, I think he's really smart in his matchmaking. Um, you know, I think he is a legitimate boxer, right? Like, like the team he has around him. Those are guys that have been in world title fights. I agree. They they, they understand like the yo this ain't a game. So I, I you know if he's with them and they're co-signing, I think he has something, you know. And that I, that speaks to Jay Leon Love. That speaks to uh, shoot, can't even think of his trainer right now. Um, Bj Flores. Bj Flores. Like like they've been to that level, right? Um, so I think they know what they have. I think they're good enough boxing minds that they are putting him in with people that he's going to beat. Um, so I have, I have no problem with that. Like that, that's the game, right? Um, I think I told Felix last week, you know, people praise Fernando Vargas Jr. for getting a knockout. It's like, okay, well, let's look at who he's fighting, you know, because upside down records, whatever. Expected at, at this level, right? Like that's what you do. But, you, you, but the difference is there's two things that are different about it. Is that journeyman boxers are still professional boxers. It's it's different than fighting somebody that has no ring experience. And the other thing is that that kid's not getting a, a ranking of any kind in any weight class. No one taking him seriously as somebody that's near a title. No, okay, he, he's not getting a ranking, but he sure is getting, you know, publicity from 
whatever boxing outlet they're putting them out there. Fernando Vargas Jr. Oh, look at this. Look at this. I think the problem here is the WBC granting that world ranking. And I I just think that's because they want to be in the business of Jake Paul. Like If we just took it for what he is, people want to see him fight. He's low level right now. He's getting, he's working his way up. But I think because so much money is coming in that we have the sanctioning body coming in and saying, Hey, we want to cope. We want to be on this early. And that's kind of where my problem is. Like why, why is the WBC getting, tied in with this right like just let him do his thing let him make his money because that's exactly. that's what he was he's after he never he's never said he was gonna i mean i think recently he's probably been more vocal about being a world champion and fighting canelo and all that but he's always been about just putting on a, a show a spectacle uh, he was never gonna be in the mix with all the other top guys in the division at least that's yeah. not his intention was but until now it's and I, you know, you got to blame WBC for some of that too. And a lot of the fan backlash saying, you know, he's not fighting real fighters and he's wanting to do that now too. And it's putting him in this position. So, you know, yeah. here we are. And my thing he's is, he's not like, fighting. He's not coming. You know, when, when you think about, right, some of the upside down record guys, like Andre Ward got put on his ass by Darnell Boone. Jake Paul's not fighting his Darnell Boones. Jake Paul's not taking those licks the way other fighters have to do. It's not, and it's not necessarily a choice. You know what I'm saying? And if a guy makes a journeyman look easy, that's impressive, right? Because guys like that know how to go rounds. They know how to catch you with weird shit. You know, he I haven't seen I I haven't seen him solve any of those puzzles. I have no sense of what kind of fighter he is. Right. And, and I mean, that's all matchmaking, right? Like they, I mean, we saw it with Berlanga, right? They could, they could put you in with as many guys and get you first round knockouts. And then, then it switches up. That's what I'm saying. He has boxing people and boxing minds behind him. So I, I to me, I say he's a legitimate fighter. Now, now how good, I don't think he should be ranked in the top 10. Like to me, that's crazy, but I also don't know what his whole, goal in this was right like like if his goal is a canelo fight let me let me get to the point where i'm somewhat real enough fighter and i could cash out for shoot what 50 million like if he's fighting canelo like that's huge right um then man he did his thing but i think for the a sanctioning body to come in and kind of try to legitimize it just to get some percentages on their end that's that's kind of to me like don't don't be doing that like let him just do his thing he's working the way up he's putting on at least entertaining fights people with names for whatever reason right and if he beats this kid he beats whatever a three and oh you know what i mean and, and I, don't, I think tommy, i think tommy fury's garbage right like i think anderson silva probably beats him but bro for real but we're in this position because everyone's saying oh tommy fury's a real boxer but what does a real boxer mean, right? I also like, have never seen him fight before. Tommy? I've never seen him, to be honest. Bro, I've seen him a couple times, and I'm going to say Jake Paul has fought better people than Tommy Fury. But, you know, because Tommy Fury has that last name and he it has a pro record, people say, oh. He's also a reality show star. Now, yes, not he's bro. a reality show star. He's an internet star, but it's a similar genre. Yeah, like like his biggest thing is that he's Tyson Fury's brother. But I mean, look at them side to side, and you can see they're not the same person, right? Um, but I mean, this is what kind of boxing fans have forced. So this is like to me, this is a free check for Jake, right? Jake Paul's like, oh, I get to fight this guy, and and boxing fans are gonna co-sign it. Um, whatever. I watch Jake Paul fight. I, I think the real big issue here is that a sanction body coming in and saying hey we're gonna give a world ranking to this to whoever wins this fight. that's crazy that's and they've always been crooked it just it, they never seem to have they don't have a bottom they just go lower yeah. and lower um, to be honest their wbc is like red robin's bottomless fries it just it doesn't stop, it doesn't stop. <laughs> but actually like if, if i'm a if i'm a if i'm a boxer myself and you ask me which belt do i want Bro, I want that WBC belt. I want that green belt. I want that IBF, bro. That red. Oh, star. bro. Nobody's nobody's saying they want that IBF. Nobody's saying they want the W. I want the green belt. 
I want the IBF and I want the ring title because at least I, know I want the NABO. There we go. <laughs> yeah, how can I forget about that? Uh, yeah, Jake Paul won an NABO title. That would actually oh be Jake Paul, and it's wide open. I don't, I don't even know who the NABO cruiserweight champion is. I think you can't name be. one NABO champion in the past five years, bro. Don't Edgar Berlanga. Uh, Edgar Berlanga oh, won. Uh, Xander Zayas has won. Ryan Garcia is the reigning NABO champion right now. By bro. the way, to answer Weedy Gonzalez, no. I don't think he does deserve a top 20 ranking in any weight class for beating Jake Paul. Because the flip side of this, and let's let's just talk about this for a second, right? Let's say Tommy Fury does beat him. And let's say he beat – I'm just putting it out there. Let's say he beat him bad, which I don't think is going to happen. I think Jake's going to win. But let's say he beat him bad. What does that do for his career? Like he's the pro boxer that came in and fought the YouTuber and beat him up. Like it's kind of a lose-lose. Yeah. But like you said, at the end of the day, Tommy Fury – is more reality star than boxing star, right? Yeah. Like, but I, I don't which think is exactly which is exactly why he would not deserve a top twenty ranking. But you know the way they're selling this, which hey, boxing is a business. You sell the fight, you promote the fight, and that last name lends him credibility. And you know, and I was looking at the undercard, and uh, uh, Ilunga Makabu versus uh, Badu Jack is actually a good fight. That's no, that's, that's the dude Canelo was going to fight? Yep. Yeah. That's a fight. That's a fight. That's actually a good matchup. Hey, that's – and that's funny that they're throwing that WBC Cruiserweight Championship there. Um, oh, I didn't know Ashton Silva is on the undercard too. He's a, he's a hot little prospect. You want to uh, – definitely want to tune in to watch him fight. Yeah. Um, no, but, but – Yeah, but – this, this is news to me. Makabu's fighting uh, – Badu? Yeah. Dang. Okay. So Badu cool. could get a belt out of it at 39. You know what I mean? Where is this fight being televised then? ESPN Plus, I believe, but it's in. Uh, it's going to be during the day because it's it's over in Saudi. So it's on free ESPN Plus? No, I, I think it's ESPN Plus. Paper. We don't even want to talk about why they're doing it there. The money? <laughs> Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's what everything here is. I mean, let's take let's take the whole real boxer out of it. Jake Paul is a professional fighter, is he not? Right. Yes. Yeah. So hundred percent. He's a boxer, professional fighter. Is he not boxing's biggest cash cow right now? Like dead ass. No, I mean I think Canelo is, but I think he is the biggest cash cow relative to his. Uh, accomplishment uh, yeah that's for sure i don't i think i don't know i feel like he probably brings in more money than canelo still um, yeah and I, I i mean i don't know about that but i mean he's i think even for me right like he's got to be top five guys that i want to see yeah right just for entertainment value right and i'm not like i don't get on this oh i'm a boxing guy only this Man, what did I speak about earlier? The BKFC, right? Yeah. Bare knuckle. Bro, part of it is entertainment for me, right? Like, I want to see violence. I want to see entertainment. And, you know, to be that big star, you got to combine it all. Um, and, and I think Jake Paul does that. And, you know, whoever he's fighting, he's constantly fighting a name that will kind of generate a story, right? Um, he could easily be fighting guys that we've never heard of, or you know, even real boxers that we've never heard of. But you know, he understands it's a business, and you know, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. And I just looked it up too. Um, it's only sixty bucks for this pay per view, so hey, that's not too bad. I said bring back the fifty dollar pay per view. I could mess with the sixty. That's way too fucking much. <laughs> I could, if if it was now, I will follow that up saying I can mess up. <laughs> it's way too fucking much for this bullshit fucking fight. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm interested in the Badu Jack, uh, bro. The Badu Jack Makabu. That's bro. I'm interested in that, like genuinely, right? Right. right. Because you because are, you know, you even though it, it, even though it didn't happen, like that's who Canelo was gonna go up to cruiserweight and take his belt, right? So how is a fighter guy? too? Yeah, and, you know, that's kind of the first time that 
he kind of got brought to the masses and we're like, yo, how good is that guy? And we know Badu, right? Like Badu was never in an easy fight. Like, uh, but it's always entertaining. He kind of always makes his last run at the end of rounds. Um, so for them to fight, man, that's that's I'm interested in that. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm with that too. Um undercard overall looked pretty pretty decent. And hey, I mean they're not banging us over the head. We are paying for that monthly subscription fee, but they're only hitting us with 60 as opposed to hundred. So I ain't too mad at that. Still don't think I'm gonna buy that pay-per-view, but I'll be watching the live uh, uh, tweets and whatever people throw out on on Twitter and whatnot. So hopefully you guys are contributing to that because that's how I will be watching this fight more than likely. <laughs> what else do we got this coming weekend? Uh, Rigandau comes back. I didn't. I the other, the, the other fight, but by the way, on I think it's Friday before this one is uh, Subriel Matisse is coming back for the first time in 13 months. I think he's probably, you know, kind of low-key the most dangerous guy at 140 pounds right now. 18 wins, 18 knockouts. Um, a tremendous fighter. I need to – I want to look up one more time who the opponent is. Um, where is he Where is he from? Subrail Matias. He is Puerto Rican. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have seen him before, but he's uh, he's a very, very dangerous puncher. Like I said, he's 18 and 1, 18 knockouts. He's fighting a guy from Argentina that's 30 and 0. Hasn't been in with too many quality opponents, but he's, again, an undefeated guy. I've seen some clips of him. He's very tricky. Um, and Matias lost, lost a fight uh, a little bit before the pandemic, has avenged that fight, and has also beaten two undefeated fighters since that fight. And then uh, Bro Broner's this weekend too, right? No, no, canceled. No, Come yeah, on. they just straight up canceled the entire event. <laughs> so that's that's and <laughs> Tevin Farmer. I'm sorry, everybody, but Tevin Farmer and Mickey Bay has been canceled and postponed. Hey, Tevin Farmer, Mickey Bay, nobody wanted to see you guys fight anyway. I'm just keep it real. <laughs> well, they've been trying, bro. This is like almost as bad as Cambosis and Tiafimo. This is worse. I can't I, – I honestly can't think of another fight that's been – for one, nobody cares about this fight. And two, it keeps getting postponed and canceled, which is hilarious because there's just random unforeseen circumstances. Um Bro, yeah, they, they gotta good. they gotta just they gotta just gotta just scratch that card like man Tevin Farmer like I, I mean I respect the skills nobody ever wanted to see him day one there's a weird lane of boxing right now where it's just like probably not gonna happen you know what I mean like we're seeing these fights get announced and it seems to be attached to old Floyd shit like Broner or Mickey Bay or these other guys that used to be affiliated with Floyd and then the fights just don't happen. Like yeah. are you if you, you guys know what I'm talking about? Are you noticing this? Bro, well I mean Adrian Broner, like come on. What he when he was supposed to fight Figueroa last time and then what was it? His mental health Fucking Anthony Peterson was supposed to be on this card again, too. So this is another opportunity. That, that whole card was cursed from I could have told you it was. I think I probably did say this fight's not going to happen when Adrian Broner was. Right, announced. you got Broner, you got Anthony Peterson, you got Mickey Bay versus Tevin Farmer, which is like this mythological. Why Why isn't Tevin Farmer fought in three years? He's trying to get the Mickey Bay fight. They've been chasing each other for over a year. That's, bro, that's nasty. He's trying to get the Mickey Bay fight. Like, come <laughs> on, what is Mickey Bay offering these days? What does that even bro. What does that even do? If Tevin Farmer beats Mickey Bay, what does that even do? I don't know. Does but anybody like, even watch that fight? And let's talk about it. I mean, because I don't think anybody is. Who even wins that fight? I mean, I obviously, I would lean towards Tevin Farmer, but. I have no idea. Tevin's been so inactive. It's literally been, like we said, over three years. You know, I, I have no idea what he's working with right now. I, I mean, I have no idea. I would say Tevin Farmer because Mickey Bay was a prospect, what, 10, 15 years ago? I don't know. Yeah. But, but, I mean, does it even matter? Like, Like, if Tevin Farmer, even if Tevin Farmer, who wouldn't, goes in and one hit sleeps Mickey Bay, does that do anything? Like, 
I don't even know what this fight leads up to. For Tevin Farmer, maybe. Have you seen that guy punch? Like, it might, it might cause some shockwaves. But I wanted to go back. Well, yeah, that's. Um, I was going to drop this one real quick. This is also going to be on the undercard of the Subriel Matisse fight uh, yeah. Elvis Rodriguez versus Joseph Adorno, which is a fucking fantastic matchup. Two really solid young fighters. I mean, that's that's a tremendous matchup. Which, and by the way, the Subro Matisse and Jeremiah Ponce, uh, it's for the vacant IBF 140 title, which is pretty dope. I didn't know that that belt was... Matisse is a very, very much avoided guy because of his punching power and his kind of awkward punch delivery. And I think at 140, he's kind of like currently the boogeyman. We'll find out on Saturday night. That's, I'm looking forward to that. And that, that arena is getting more and more popular, the Armory. Um, and that's the first time I've seen a show there that David Morales not headlining. So that's yeah, that's man. Cool. man that's, that's the Minnesota spot, right? Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you gotta. I feel like they should name that after David Morrell. Yeah, <laughs> straight up. You ready for this? At the bottom of the card, I'm looking Adam Konoski versus Devin Vargas. Wow! 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 Devin Vargas still getting fights, huh? Adam Konoski versus Devin Vargas. That's crazy. Yeah, that's on the Showtime card, right? Yep, that's gonna be a good show, man. I wish I was in Minneapolis for that one. Kanowski's still fighting, huh? Who did he lose to? That uh, he lost to the guy Deontay knocked out. No, he well, yeah, he lost twice to Hellenius, and then he lost to a guy named Ali the Marizan, who is, is a good fighter. But if mm -hmm. Kanowski was gonna be that guy, he would beat the Marizan, and that, that's what I, I remember him. He, he was in that type of fight, like. It's a winnable fight, and if you don't, you know, I didn't think we'd see him again. But the Mirazin's a legit contender, right? I mean, I'm looking at him; he's 17 and one. Yes, sir, Weedy. That's who we're talking about—the Polish heavyweight. Yeah. Um, and but he's again, what he is is he's a solid contender. He's ranked number 20 on Boxrec, and if Kolnowski was going to be a serious guy, that's the kind of guy you have to beat, and he just wasn't at that level anymore. So we'll see what he has left. I mean, I don't know how much we're going to prove against 40-year-old uh, Devin Vargas, but. Bro, I don't know if I ever remember Devin Vargas winning a fight. <laughs> <laughs> For real. <laughs> like, he was like an Olympian, right? Was he Olympian or just stand on that? Yeah. that's. He was a high-level amateur. Dakota. Maybe the, maybe the loser could get Richard Torres. That's a... <laughs> Jesus. I mean, probably it would be better than anyone else he's fought. Yeah, <laughs> hey, why not give him give him the winner? No, nah, that's too. We don't need that type of step up yet. <laughs> Dakota, talk to us about Heather Hardy. Yeah, bro, fucking kind of a New York legend. Um, Heather Hardy coming back, not coming back, but returning to the ring on uh, Thursday, the twenty third, against uh, Tana Cardoso. Um, you know, I think. From what I've seen, it just it seems like Heather's kind of seeing what she's got left. And um, you know, she had the two back to back losses, the the fight with Amanda Serrano and then losing to Jessica Kamara. This is gonna be kind of her second comeback fight since those two losses. Um, so I mean, listen, man, she's 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 very much a a legend of New York in a lot of ways. And um I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what she has left. Yeah, it should be entertaining. I mean, she had – I was looking at a post earlier about, like, the greatest sports upsets in history, and she was definitely on that list, top top ten. Well, an amazing story, too, because she started boxing, I think, at 26 years old. Like, that was the first time she stepped into a boxing ring. And, you know, whatever, 10 years later, finds herself in a fight with Amanda Serrano, who is a legitimate all-time great of New York, and went the distance with her and, and showed a lot of heart – and was throwing the whole fight and has kind of like exceeded her level and her experience level throughout her career. Did you get to go to that fight? I didn't, unfortunately, but I saw Heather fight live on the undercard. I was at um, Thurman versus Porter and oh. she fought on the undercard and I was actually kind of sitting near some of her family. Yeah, that's cool. That I'm pretty sure the crowd was live for her and Amanda because like you said, those oh, are two men. Two New York legends right there for sure. And again, like, you know, we all kind of know Amanda's one of the top fighters in all of women's boxing. And I think everyone sort of had this expectation that she was going to walk through Heather. 
And she did beat her up a little bit, but Heather kind of made her claim to the fight and 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 stayed in it and kept her hands busy the whole time. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, even, you know, Heather Hardy's just, I feel like you don't even got to follow women's boxing to know Heather Hardy, right? Like she's kind of earned that name for herself. Like even if you're just a fan of the sport, uh, she kind of transcends through all that for her style of fighting, just her grit. Uh, and, you know, the fights she puts on, whether she wins or loses. Um, yeah, man. It's- and one of the more popular female fighters yeah. in that post Layla Ali and Wolf Christy Martin era. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I don't know how much she has left, if anything, but um, man, it, she still has a name, and if she could capitalize off of it, Hey, do you? Effects. Weedy, a hundred percent. Can we put that on the? Can we put that on the screen? A hundred percent. I'm not with it, man. I'm not with the Jays. Um, we talked about this in the chat. I think it's dope. I'm a sneakerhead, so I, I like her shoe collection. I just there's a time and place for everything in the ring. Like, like she, she has a big enough name. She has big enough promoters that she could get with a designer and they, they could cook up a boxing shoe to, you know, reflect whatever J she wants it to look like, like to stop wearing the, the regular basketball shoes in the boxing ring. Yeah. It's, it's tacky. It's all. You didn't, what was your thoughts on that one, Dakota? I think they look awesome, but they're definitely not the most functional thing to wear for a fight. Yeah. That's too. But I, I think they look good. They do. They do look good. It just. But if you, it's like if you know what you're looking at, you know, like, ah, you don't want to be wearing those. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Roy had those those uh, Jordan boxing shoes. Those are cool. Yeah. Um, and he had them custom made to the yeah. design. Well, I think, I think it was even uh, Caleb Plant's last fight. I don't know what shoe yeah. he was trying to look like, but it was a boxing shoe that they just made. It was the Freddy Krueger dunk. Yeah, but it was a boxing shoe. Yeah, that they that they made into that, right? Like she could do that, I would think, right? Like she has. You don't need to actually. Caleb Plant's not w- actually wearing the the dunk in the ring because that would look ridiculous as it does on Amanda. <laughs> and, um, you know, Speaking of I, Caleb Plant, let's see this shirt again. Let's say, oh, we got that. <laughs> it's 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 coming. They're out there. Choose your fighter. March 25th. They're going to be in there. Um, yeah, man. I love that, man. It's, I can't wait to, to grab grab one of them T-shirts and rock that shit. Um, what else we got, fellas? I think that's it, boys, to be honest. I think we've covered the bases here. I think the only other thing, I'm, I'm not trying to keep us, uh, Ryan Garcia, Tank Davis signed. That's the last I heard. Yeah. Signed, it just uh, until I see a fucking poster and a and a, and a some yeah. sort of formal announcement or advertisement. It's it's right there. We're right on the cusp. I think we're closer to this fight being made than we were a Spence and Crawford. Um, I think we're right oh, yeah. around the corner for sure for this one. So keep them fingers crossed. We have a I date. Mean, I I always I always hope you know. You know, promoters are always trying to hop on, leech off of other promoters. One of the biggest fights going down this weekend uh, with Jake Paul, Tommy Fury, not for skills or not for what it is, but because their names, you know, maybe we get an official announcement. I don't know. Uh, You know, Floyd, Floyd always seems to do that, right? Like whenever Canelo fights, Floyd throws his announcement. You know, maybe somebody hijacks this fight, this, all the viewers, we get an announcement, but Canelo also announced he's fighting in May. Um, I didn't even see that. We also, I mean, we don't have a post or anything yet, but I guess it's expected. Uh, John Ryder, oh, yeah, in and the, Mexico, they're both on the bottom of that uh, choose your fighter list, too, which is pretty dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. We will uh, see y'all next week after we talk about Jake Paul. Dakota, do you want to you want to throw some bets, or do you think Jake Paul is going to be Tommy? Mm-hmm. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. I'm mute. 
I think he probably will. I have yet to hear anybody say anything positive about Tommy Fury's boxing skills, and I'm guessing they're taking this fight because they think he they he can win it. Uh, so no bets. I'm not much of a bet man, but I would say bet on Jake Paul. All right. Well, next week I will try to make sure I have my bottle. Um, and Ray, you owe me like one shot at least. I'm definitely gonna get that one in. But uh, <laughs> no, off a of DQ, we're gonna do that. A win is a win, bro. A wrestling, a wrestling, the a pro wrestling DQ. I I don't know if that should count, but That's man, whatever you say, I'm with it. I'm with it. We'll let this the court decide. Does it count? Yes or no? Uh, I don't know, man. I think you got to flip a coin. <laughs> <laughs> if we got to flip a coin, then we, no, I lost pretty convincingly with mine. So with Lee Wood and what was Austin that? Trout. And Austin Trout, yeah, those are both stoppages. So I'll I'll, I'll take it next next week. You bring your shots. I'll, I'll take one for uh, Brock Lesnar losing to Bobby Ashley after landing like I don't even know three, four, five. <laughs> what are they called? Uh, what's his move? F F five. F five. Yeah, but I'll do it for you. All right, deal. And Dakota will be taking a shot of something else. <laughs> right, Dakota? Sure. <laughs> All right, man. I will see y'all next week. Peace, fellas. Peace. Thanks, everybody, for watching all the comments and engagement. Yes, and uh, make sure y'all tune in and subscribe to the uh, the OnlyFans. We got some. If y'all want shirts, they're coming. Hit Felix up. Yeah. <laughs> Slide into the ITR DMs. They're open. Peace.